Good day. This is the third program in a four-part video series that has been highlighting the economic valuation of sustainable natural resource use in Malawi. The video series comes as a result of a report of a study that was undertaken by the government of Malawi while implementing the Malawi Poverty and Environment Initiative. The aim of the study is to enhance the contribution of the sustainable management of natural resources to poverty reduction, food security and economic growth and to facilitate the achievement of both the Malawi Growth and Development Strategy and the Millennium Development Goals. Just to refresh your memory, in the last two programs, we looked at how much natural resources, especially fisheries and forestry, contribute to the economic development of the country. It was highlighted in the last two programs that despite the significant contribution of these resources to the economy, this significance is not adequately recorded in official statistics. This then denies the government of Malawi much needed revenue that could have been realized. In this particular video, we are looking at soil resources. Out of every 100 Malawians, over 80 of them depend on agriculture as their economic activity and a major source of livelihood. In an agro-based economy such as Malawi, soil has a very direct contribution to the agricultural economy. Soil is also important to the construction industry, particularly in the making of bricks and the use of sand in construction. There is a growing small and medium pottery, especially in central Malawi in Dedza and Kota Kota districts, which also acts as a tourist attraction. Soils also provide water purification and storage control of the water table, as well as electricity power generation. Malawi's topsoils are therefore an important natural resource. However, topsoils are continuously being degraded. The degradation of soil resources therefore has far-reaching consequences beyond the negative effects on the environment as such. Uh, maintaining a good standards of the soil or land in this case shall mean that uh, you know uh, the process of agriculture production uh, creates uh, um, things like soil erosion or the declining of soil fertility. As the plants are growing in the, in the soil, they do remove some soil nutrients and that leads to land degradation. Similarly, uh, when it is raining, there is always soil erosion which remove the soil particles and also remove some of the soil uh, nutrients, again leading to land degradation. So if that continues, it means that the productivity of land will decline. So uh, when we're talking of maintaining good sizes of the soil, what it means is that uh, we have to find means or technologies that can ensure that uh, the nutrients or lost through either growing off crops or soil erosion are depressed back into the soil. The livelihoods of people involved in the various activities are likely to be affected as well through loss of jobs and incomes. Soil degradation, therefore, negatively affects soil supplies, fisheries, electricity generation, agriculture and water quality. Degradation of soil resources has a direct and immediate impact not only on the livelihoods of the people but also on economic growth and the development of the country. Specifically, loss of soil means that either less will be produced for a given level of technology or more inorganic fertilizers would have to be used in order to sustain agricultural production. Soil erosion is a major cause of current levels of hunger and poverty in Malawi as it leads to reduced yields and increased use of inorganic fertilizers in order to produce enough food at the expense of purchasing other goods and services. 
As a result of declining yields and the lack of sustainable farmland, farmers are forced to increasingly cultivate on steep land which further exacerbates the level of soil erosion. Other land degradation factors include chemical degradation, surface capping, loss of soil structure, loss of organic matter content, water logging, and acidification or alkalinization. Soil erosion is caused by expansion of agriculture, deforestation, and overgrazing. More soil erosion comes about due to land scarcity which forces people to cultivate in marginal and fragile lands. Based on a limited number of sample sites, it is estimated that on average soil loss is approximately 20 tons per hectare per year. The studies undertaken by the Agriculture Development Programme and the National Environmental Action Plan indicate that this loss results into loss of agricultural yields ranging from 4 to 25% each year. This loss is significant if we consider the fact that Malawi's economy is agro-based and relies on rain-fed agriculture. A conservative estimate is that the annual on-site loss of agricultural productivity as a result of soil degradation was 7.5 billion Malawi kwacha, the equivalent of 1.6% of GDP in 2007. Additionally, soil erosion negatively affects hydroelectric power generation. Using data from ESCOM and the Millennium Challenge Corporation on the cost of minimizing this impact, a report of a study estimated an annual cost of some 10 million US dollars in 2007 prices. The government of Malawi has been key in sponsoring a number of interventions to promote soil conservation. The most significant of these interventions has been the ADP Under Focus Area 3. This intervention's main objective is to increase agricultural area under sustainable land management from 100,000 hectares to 250,000 hectares. Intervention 1. Contour ridging and planting of vetiver hedgerows. In the Middle Shiri case study, it is argued that the traditional contour ridging technology is what most farmers are using. This is where farmers plant on ridges 75 to 90 centimeters apart, reconstructed every year and weeding once and earthing up the ridge using a hoe. International experience and considered experience within Malawi over the past 20 years suggests that contour markers should be used to realign crop ridges to the contour on all cultivated land with slopes greater than 3% but less than 13%. Almost 54% of the middle shiri catchment has such characteristics. It has been suggested that this would control runoff and erosion and increase infiltration, particularly when used alongside tide ridges. Vertiva should be planted on contour markers and managed to form vertiva hedgerows, which provide a barrier to runoff. Analysis of ProScar project costs showed a total annual cost for the same activities of 6,356 Malawi kwacha per hectare. However, once the conservative estimates of farmer labor costs were included, total costs rose to approximately 11,000 Malawi kwacha per hectare in year one and 6,000 Malawi kwacha per hectare in subsequent years. Benefits from these soil conservation interventions accrue off-site and to farmers who introduce them. However, it can take some time for farmers to realize these benefits in terms of increased yields. 
If the soil's conservation interventions are successful, they can produce an off-site value of 2,079 Malawi kwacha per hectare in this catchment. For this to happen, farmers need to be given incentives. As these interventions are clearly justified from a national economic perspective, government should consider paying farmers who provide this environmental service. As the private discount rate of many farmers is likely to be higher than the social return to this intervention, paying what is worth to the nation is probably not enough by itself to encourage most farmers to adopt soil conservation interventions. However, if soil conservation interventions can be combined with conservation agriculture to raise yields significantly in the short term, the package as a whole is likely to change farmers' behavior. Second intervention, conservation agriculture. Minimum tillage combined with undersowing with Trefosia vogeli has the potential to significantly increase maize yields and farm profitability if farmers apply fertilizer. Promotion of labor-saving technologies, namely using higher tractor, herbicides for weed management and crop protection. Promotion of management systems and technologies that protect fragile land like riverbanks, dambo areas, hilly areas and steep slopes. Promotion of community-based dambo management systems and subsidizing inputs to raise forestry and fruit tree seedlings or buying of plants from commercial nurseries for farmers and village communities for planting on fragile or degraded land. As has been evidenced, soil resources are crucial just like other natural resources. By unsustainably utilizing soil resources, we affect other natural resources like forestry, fisheries, and wildlife as these resources rely on one another in one way or the other. The responsibility to sustainably utilize the soil resources is every person's responsibility. An appeal should be made to farmers to adopt recommended technologies and techniques of conservation practices which must also enable them to make profits on a sustainable basis. To ensure this, the interventions should bring tangible economic, social as well as environmental benefits to the direct stakeholders. Conservation needs to do more than just rehabilitate the environment. Tackling the associated problems of food insecurity and soil degradation within Malawi calls for a long-term investment program that can provide the human and financial resources required to implement a national strategy supported by government and other relevant institutions such as Water Board and ESCOM. If each and every one of us individually took an initiative, together we can manage to sustainably use soil resources.